guys go for the home state. I think the Eagles. Robbo, yeah, I'm a bit of an Eagles man, but uh, don't discount Essendon because of their great record against the Eagles. So the bounce of the ball to start the match in the ruck there for Essendon was Lucas. So that's a little bit of a surprise. Alessio lining up at centre half forward for Essendon. We always uh, like to look at Essendon's forward setup. They're always uh, creative. At the moment, they've got Scott Cummings playing forward pocket, and actually no full forward. So we'd probably, uh, hopefully, we can get a quick look at the uh, Eagles interchange bench just to see what they are doing as far as their lineup is concerned. Essendon have got the ball to within scoring distance, but it's taken away by Downsborough. His kick not all that good. Gathered by Banfield. He's well tackled there by Cummings. Umpire calls play on and away goes Downsborough once again. His kick goes back close to the wing. No mark taken there. Chance for Chris Danaher. Tackled by Waterman. Ball spills now for Mitchell White. White's kick across his left shoulder is high. Lands at half forward. Bombers under a bit of pressure across their half back line, but Harvey composed. Gets it away to Fletcher. Fletcher's kick smothered off the boot. Kemper's there for the Eagles. He's a chance to get a possession here. Gets it away to Mitchell White. The umpire has called a free kick and it will go to Dean Kemp. Dean Kemp for the West Coast. He's 55 to 60 metres from goal. He kicks to half forward. Donnelly couldn't take the mark. Good tackle affected there. Still at centre half forward for the West Coast. This is Wanganeen and Harvey. Harvey tackled by Waterman. Ball spills to Matera. Mitchell White, handball, goes further back for Kemp. Kemp looking to set this one up, plenty of time now. Goes on to the right foot, kicks the ball 30 metres out in front of goal. At the back was Darren Buick playing an on-ball role. We'll probably see him up the other end of the ground very shortly. And coming in to take a pretty good mark down low was Justin Blumfield. He plays on quickly, kicks it into space. Barnard applies the pressure, but here comes Guy McKenna, the All-Australian halfback. And a spearing kick into David Hart. Sets up the Eagles and away they go. Going forward this time, a very good mark to Andrew Donnelly under some pretty fierce pressure from Scott Lucas. Quickly plays on, looking for White, couldn't quite take it. Ben Cousins, great young player in the making. Comes in, will probably shoot at goal. Nice handball back to Sumic. Round onto the right foot, now the left. Looks at goal and scores one. Great play by Cousins. First goal to the West Coast Eagles, and as you say, Robbo, great play by young Ben Cousins. And didn't the crowd erupt? They love Peter Sumich over here when he kicks a goal, and uh, it was a great awareness by Cousins. Well, he thought his way through the situation there, got past Fletcher, knew that he got past Wanganoon, and then really thought was going to get back onto his left foot, but really good kick, good handball, I should say, and a good finish by Sumich to get the ball rolling. Well, just some, some composure by a young player. Ben Cousins setting it up for Peter Sumich to get the first goal of the game. O'Donnell can't clear that congestion around the centre. This player can. Schofield goes towards full forward. Good kick. Sumich on the end of it. Couldn't take the mark. Punched away by Berbikov. Still Sumich dragged off the football. No free kick. Berbikov to defend. To Chris Danaher. Short kick. Chance for Barnard. Handball down the boundary line. Lucas taken over by Donnelly and the boundary umpire will throw it in on centre wing. So a pretty fierce start here at Subiaco Oval. One goal to the Eagles. Essendon yet to register a score. Taking the front spot was Lucas. Banfield couldn't control it. Through comes Hardwick. Scrubber kick forward. Petty playing his first game for 96. Back after a shoulder reconstruction, gets a handball through. Metropolis over the top, finds Donnelly with plenty of space. Quickly kicks the ball down to Mitchell White. Slightly off the side boot, out of bounds on the full. As Joey Massey just clears the throat. With his hands on the share and he'd be desperate to get on the ground. So the kick back by uh, Dustin Fletcher lands close to the wing. Schofield does well on O'Donnell. Still in the action is Schofield underneath there, dragged a little bit too high there by Scott Lucas and Jared Schofield, who has uh, certainly made his presence felt since becoming a fairly regular member of the West Coast side. Takes the free kick, his kick goes close to half forward. Fletcher gathers, can't keep it in. So that boundary umpire will throw it in. 
don't know whether Dwayne Lamb can hear us, but uh, maybe he can, uh, as we have a look at the weather, we're looking for a uh, confirmation as to what's happened with the West Coast side. We were told that Turnbull was out, but Bond didn't come onto the field when the players were warming up. It's Lovell for a kick. with the ball, cleared there by Hart, struggled for possession. Hardwick has the football for Essendon, but uh, the umpire is forced to bounce. And that looks like it might be Bond in the middle there. Sakura, Tony Evans for the West Coast. So we have confirmed that Turnbull out of the side. And Bond, who did play a full game in the WAFL yesterday, is on the bench at this stage. Hand pass wide, Chris Danner tackled well by Schofield. Gets the handball away, Donnelly. Should have nearly kicked. Then decides on the hand pass in towards the middle of the ground. Metropolis gives away a bit of ground. Banfield. Gungiol kick towards half forward. Gather was by Lovell. Tap on by Buick. Gives the Bombers a chance. Doolan's kick high. Maybe marked by Mark Mercury. Mercury takes it away. Trying to play on quickly. Looking for James Hurd. Centres the ball. Through comes Kemp. Wasn't a great choice of kick for Mercury. Kemp on the left foot. Looking for Matera. Pushing down from the wing. And that will be 50 metres. That's a pretty poor mistake early in the game because this will set up Peter Matera for what for a shot at goal. Yes, it is a, a poor situation, isn't it? I mean, it turns an 80 metre shot at goal from Matera into a pretty much a, a 25, 30 metre shot. And uh, that's just a bad discipline, bad morale. It's a real blow to rest. And should Matera kick the goal? And uh, something Ben Doolan, I think, would like that second or two back. Peter Matera just gets the bootlaces right. It's been all Eagles in this opening term. Essendon yet to really penetrate their forward line. But James Hurd there, matched up on Fraser Gary. It's Peter Matera having a fine season on the halfback. Lines up for goal. Straight through the middle for the Eagles second. Two goals straight, West Coast, Essendon yet to score. Yes, yeah, certainly all the momentum's been with the Eagles in this early part of the game. Their midfield uh, is on top, their half-back line has been fairly much impenetrable at this point, and uh, really all, uh, all the indicators are that the Eagles are really on the job today. It's going to be a tough, even from this point, for Essendon to get back. 27 possessions to 16. So 12 points to uh, Essendon yet to score. The Eagles, good start. Up high was Donnelly. Kick forward for the Bombers towards half forward. Taken by Hetty. Hand pass away, David Hart. Beautiful job as a sweeper across that half-back, full-back line. And the kick was a beauty. It finds Donnelly, who did the ruck work. So a uh, roving commission for Donnelly for the West Coast Eagles. His kick lands close to centre-half forward. So much good mark in front of Berbatov. And the flags, the hands, the cheers, the Eagles supporters love Peter Sumich. I think Peter Sumich could run for state premier and get elected. Every time I see him play for the Eagles at the moment, uh, the crowd are just so much on his side. And uh, second shot at goal in the early part of the game, uh, he's doing his part today as well. And it looks a pretty simple shot at goal for Sumich, but uh, he has been known to... Just let himself down a little bit with these simple shots. Straight in front. Beautiful kick, though. Makes no mistake, he's kicked two. That's now by the umpire. Lucas gets his hand first on it. Waterman couldn't take it. Kemp's down there looking for a possession. But out comes Lucas and drives the Bombers forward into their forward 50 for the first time this afternoon. And Shea Cockatoo Collins leads his play to the ball. Takes a mark 40 metres out from goal playing the front position wasn't really the long kick forward he just uh, he really reacted quickly cockatoo collins to get on the end of that long kick well, he came into the selected side two weeks ago against the tigers after being dropped on thursday night to become a match winner and from 40 meters out he's put it straight through the middle the bombers on the board just so important to get that first goal on the board, particularly with the Blitzkrieg that uh, the Eagles tend to have launched in this first five or ten minutes of the game, but uh, really Essendon got the scoreboard ticket great for their morale, they really needed that because all the play was against them up to this point. 
Mark Harvey was fierce too as it at his attack at the ball at that set of bounds. Looked as though he's trying to clean up Waterman. So three goals to one, West Coast lead. Still very early in the game. Both sides still trying to search each other out. Matera tried the handball to Banfield. And now a free kick. It will go to Peter Matera. And the umpire very quickly deciding that there was an infringement against the West Coast Eagles champion, Peter Matera. He's already kicked a goal. He's kicked towards the uh, Sumich direction. Schofield should kick a goal here. He goes in and misses to the right. Disappointing finish there. Sumich contesting the mark. Schofield, the crumb gatherer. Not able to convert. Gary O'Donnell for Essendon. 12 and a half minutes left in the first quarter and the central umpire maybe just checking a blood rule is here is he? Yes you can see there Jared Schofield to go to the interchange bench so a little bit of time here for the players to collect their thoughts because the interchange player will first of all have to strip his tracksuit top it's Tony Evans to come on and of course he's got to be given a chance to take a position on the field similar to Schofield who is to be attended to by the medical staff yes and Tony Evans normally comes on after half time in the last couple of weeks as Gary O'Donnell kicks it to himself and runs the full 30 metres looking forward pretty good mark there to Blumfield for his second kick for this afternoon kick into the middle of the ground looking for her great mark out in front Played by Hayden Kennedy. Probably would have been infringed high anyhow. Long kick forward. Looking for Cummings. Well rode by Danaher. Looking for the handball around the corner. Cummings again. Sets the shot from 40 metres out. It's a pretty good kick. Second goal to the Bombers. Three goals, one to two straight. And that was almost initiated from the kicking situation where the Eagles played man to man and when Essendon bunched it's in the halfback and Donald played on and uh, good, good mark by Blumfield then Hurd and then on to Cummings and really a, a good goal to Essendon I mean only that's six or seven points down when most of the game has been the Eagles way It's an interesting start to a big game here at Subiaco between the Eagles and the Bombers Bounce of the ball again Donnelly tries to get it down not able to break clear was Cousins. Now it's forced forward for Essendon towards centre half forward. James Hurd, attack on the football, didn't quite succeed in taking it with him. O'Donnell's tap on was good. Ola Renshaw, great to see him back playing senior football. James Hurd's kick, hooks it in towards centre half forward. Oh, high flying attempt there was by Morrison. It's been paid by the look of it. And Morrison for the Eagles, gets the hand pass wider still. Out for Gary. On to David Hart. Hart from uh, half-back. The kick slews off the side. Oh, great effort by Banfield. Not able to gather. Tremendous courage shown by Banfield. Kemp tries to slip the hand pass. Un unsuccessful. Chris Danaher in there for Essendon. Still the umpire allows play to go on. Wanganoon it is. It throws his right boot at it. Up towards half-forward. Great diving performance there by McKenna. He's a tidy player, Guy McKenna. And he's been awarded the mark at half-back for the Eagles. Now he goes wide and he's got Donnelly alone. Finding some space, Andrew Donnelly. Creating some confusion, one suspects, after he takes the centre bounce. Drives it long looking for Sumich. Good punch away from the Bombers. Here comes Wanganin. Hasn't seen the footy today. Steadies himself. Always got plenty of time, the Brownlow medalist. And a pretty good kick to Scott Lucas. On he goes to Cockatoo Collins once again. Bird out front. Just playing the position pretty well out in front, James Hurd. Over to McCurry. It's got Cummings once again out in front. It's an interesting place to play for forward from, Lee, but uh, successful today. Yes, well, I mean, Essen always do something that you're not expecting. And yes, they start him in the forward pocket with no one on the front of the goal square, but uh, he's playing full forward position. It's only a question of, I suppose, where exactly is your starting point at the centre bounces. So we know Scott Cummings is a fine kick. Accuracy will only be the problem here. We'll kick this from about 47 metres out. Slight tailwind. 
Looks good off the boot. He has got his second goal in the opening quarter. And again, a couple of those Essendon goals have been really set up by the key mark by uh, James Hurd in the centre square. Again, it's, we see it over to Hurd. He was out in front, but he still had to mark it under pressure, and he succeeded in doing that. Flicked the ball on, and then really a good pass by McCurry to the leading uh, Cummings. But uh, Hurd had to take that mark, and he did. Three one to three goals, a point the difference. Chance for Essendon again. Harden slaps it onto his left foot, bounces awkwardly at centre half forward for Essendon. Hand pass. Came out from McKenna. Hart's in a bit of strife here. Ball spills the clock to Collins. Advantages with Essendon. Hurd's kick across his left shoulder. Sets it up for Buick. It bounces away from Darren Buick. He's able to gather close to the line. He's kicked towards full forward. Taken by Blumfield. He's snapped with the left foot. What's it done? And Bob, your goal. Great play by Justin Blumfield. His awareness in that situation was quite spectacular. And he gets Essendon's fourth goal on the scoreboard. The Bombers lead by five points. Well, it hasn't been a, a game of uh, two patches and in this early part. The Eagles in that early bit of the game got the three goals and just looked like they had everything going for them. But Essendon has been a fantastic fighting last five minutes to get those four goals to regain the lead. And it's really pretty enthralling game at the moment. Very quick football up and down the ground. Yes, James Hurd, Shea Cockadoo, Collins and everything now for the Bombers. Lucas gets a nice tap out, Matera coming off the wing. Doolan off the ground, replaced by Rick Olerenshaw. Great kick to Tony Evans, sets him up. Looking for Mitchell White, who is giving Fletcher a little bit of a run around at the present time. Chip kick in from White. Evans has run onto it. Through comes Barry Young. Kept in play by Lovell. A miraculous snap, no, doesn't go through. Picked up by Harvey. Nice driving, clearing kick. Into the shadows goes Barnard. Couldn't quite control. The ball goes over the line and out of bounds. And a good work, bit of work down by Berbikoff deep in defence. Down on the boundary line, we've got Dwayne Lamb. Jared, uh, yes, Schofield uh, just about to come back on. He's put behind the ear and he's got a stitch put into it. He's ready to go now. Is that Dwayne? Well, he was doing pretty well around the middle of the field, J uh, Jared Schofield. And since he came off the ground, it's uh, Essendon that have uh, taken all before them to kick the last four goals of the game. They lead by five points. They're four goals straight. West Coast are 3-1. Harvey has the ball at centre-half back. He switches play to the far side of the ground. This is Berbikoff, growing in stature with every game he plays. Is Peter Berbikoff, the kick into the middle of the ground. Taken by Chris Danaher, an important player in the makeup of the Bombers. Kemp cops the rebound. Short kick by Gehrig has been marked down there by Peter Sumich. And you would have to give him a chance to kick a goal. Evans to take his place back on the interchange bench. Schofield to come back on. Sumich goes in short. Nearly the gather by Donnelly. Across his left shoulder. It's a good long kick. The hook kick towards full forward. Bounces at the feet of Lovell. Knocked away there by Barry Young for a boundary throw in. Left forward pocket for West Coast. Only a metre or so around from the West Coast goal. West Coast pretty long odds on, 9-4 to four on, Eston 6-4, to four. good odds the Bombers seeing that they've won their last three matches against West Coast chance for Mitchell White but he's beaten for it by Wanganeen, nearly lost his shorts there Gavin Wanganeen the kick is wide and it is out of bounds on the full coming from Peter Berbikoff, the free kick will be taken by Peter Matera Matera kicked a beautiful goal earlier in this quarter, goes short, finds Mitchell White so just a little bit of breeze blowing to the end to which Essendon are kicking in this first quarter. Not all that significant, you wouldn't think. The Eagles coming to this end, getting good distance with their kicks. Have a look at this one by Mitchell White. No drama with the distance from 50 metres, he kicks it behind. The Bombers with a lead of four points. After trailing by three goals to one, early in this opening term. Darren Buick moves it away quickly. They're getting it away from fullback pretty nicely, the Bombers. And James Hurd, who was probably the key to this game, just rolls it over the boundary line. Since at the moment, the Eagles are defending the Essendon kicking by playing man-to-man, -man, and at the moment, it's sort of easy to get the ball away. It'll be uh, pretty soon, one would think they'll go to some kind of zoning system. 
Hurd in the front, takes the ball, quick handball off it to Buick. Buick drives towards centre half forward. Hetty drops back, takes a fine mark. And he really is a key to the West Coast Eagles Premiership chances, one would think. Once again, it's Donnelly finding plenty of space. He's up against Scott Lucas at the present time, who's in the ruck. Mitchell White out in front. They're doing it well, the Eagles. A good defensive work there by Dustin Fletcher. However, he's given away a free kick for over the top. He was lucky, I reckon he was out of bounds when yeah. Dustin Fletcher grabbed him. Actually, Brett Hetty started on the half-back flank, uh, obviously being eased back into senior football. Mitchell White just looking for an option to present itself. Finally, he kicks it down towards Waterman. Couldn't take the mark. Pretty hot handball back to Harvey from Wanganeen. It's another opportunity. Ducks back. Brilliantly played Wanganeen. Cool in the crisis, isn't he? And now he's looking for someone to kick it to. Finally, McCurry makes some yards to give him an option. McCurry corralled and given away. A free kick was Daniel Metropolis. Mark McCurry, who played it pretty well, comes up with a free kick. Not such a bad free kick either. The short kick has been marked by Ola Renshaw. He's still behind the wing as Ricky Ola Renshaw gets back quickly and kicks down towards right half forward. Knocked away from Alessio by Downsborough, but Alessio's able to recover. Well done, Buick, to O'Donnell. That was all clear. And the kick to half forward has been marked by Hurd. James Hurd, brilliant player. Kicks quickly towards full forward. Cummings, the ball spills to the back. McIntosh recovers quickly. But Cockatoo Collins chops it off. Little left foot kick is quite brilliant. Vision exceptional. Blumfield gets it to Cummings. Cummings in towards full forward. Lucas snapshot across the face. Registers a score. But just a behind kick by Scott Lucas. Just couldn't quite have the vision, Lucas, to see that Danaher was alone in the uh, goal square. It would have been a simple hand pass, but you've got to see the player to know that he's there. It's almost a cross by a goal striker. But Danaher couldn't get the boot on it. You see Kevin Sheedy in the coach's box. As McIntosh finally gets his kick away. And it's a good one, finds David Hart. All Australian back pocket. The end of his career, but doing it pretty well at the present time. Ola Rencher versus Masira. Through comes Banfield. Brilliant play by the Eagles, finds White. Bringing the ball down the centre corridor very nicely. Looking for Sumich, great mark. There's been quite a remarkable turnaround for Peter Sumich. Couldn't find a friend in Western Australia three years ago. Now he is the number one man. Really Mitchell White, centre half forward, very mobile player, and with all the space on the big Subiaco ground, he's getting off. Dustin Fletcher a bit at the moment, and he was the player who set up the accurate pass for the Sumich mark. from 45 metres out. Sumit shoots for his third goal in this opening term here. The Eagles trailing by five points. He's pulled it slightly. It's gone over the line for one behind. Two goals to Peter Sumich, two goals to Scott Cummings. So both key forwards having some sort of say in the situation in this match already. Kicked in by O'Donnell again. Barnard does well from behind. Morrison gets the hand pass quickly to Blumfield. Blumfield in towards the middle of the ground. Nearly gathered by Gehrig, having a terrific battle with James Hurd. Great shepherd affected by Matera. But that hand pass nearly went back to James Hurd. Downsborough gets it to McKenna. McKenna goes wide, close to the line. No one there, really. So you would suggest that Guy McKenna, the percentage play there for the West Coast, he finds the safety of the line about 85 to 90 metres around from the Eagles goal left half forward Essendon lead by four points they're 4-1 West Coast a 3-3 ruck contest O'Donnell doing the ruck work up against uh, uh, Donnelly the kick rebounds for Chris Danaher not able to get past brilliant gang tackling Schofield handball not far enough but Kemp made it look better than it was then that little hand pass for Metropolis. Metropolis goes for goal. Good kick goal to the West Coast. Oh, brilliant hands by two or three West Coast players at centre-half forward. Set it up. Metropolis' kick was a good one. And eventually, I think it was Dean Kemp that extricated the ball from this pack situation. And uh, he's been picked up by Danaher at the moment. Uh, 
but Metropolis really a beautifully long balance kick from the 50 metre mark. The Eagles supporters have found some voice as the hometown has taken the lead by two points. Donnelly and Lucas once again in the middle. O'Donnell caught. Kemp once again gets the ball out. Tripped over perhaps hard. Forced forward by Oloran Shore over to McCurry. Alessio getting into the game. Kicks it forward looking for Cummings. Couldn't take the mark. At the back was McKenna. He mops up. Gets it to Gehrig. Gehrig with pace drives long with the left foot. At the back was Wardman, but backing back into the pack was Scott Lucas, who takes a very good mark. Off to Buick. Buick to Harvey. Harvey, who usually sets something up for the Bombers. His kick, judging it just a little bit better. The advantage there by the kick in the finish was McIntosh. Gets it away to Hetty. Hetty finds Banfield. Banfield's got a player loose on centre wing. It's Donnelly. Just missed it, misjudged it there, then nearly gave the free kick away, but got into the action again on Cockatoo Collins. And fortunately for the Eagles there, it was able to recover and hold it up. Cockatoo Collins nearly away with the ball and probably could have got a free kick. Two minutes left in the first quarter. O'Donnell doing the ruck work again. Banfield to Hetty. Hetty's kick nearly marked down there by Morrison. Just slips away from his grasp. Some of the Bomber fans here in Perth watching the game. Boundary throw in. Two minutes left in the first term. West Coast by two points. We've had a fine opening term. Both sides kicking four goals. I think everybody here, Lee, is expecting a crackerjack game. Well, it certainly started that way. It's amazing in different parts of Australia. Very hard, fast surface over here in the speed of the game. Uh, much more than in the softer green conditions we saw in Melbourne yesterday. Yeah, probably the best surface in the AFL at the present time as Donnelly thumps the ball forward by 35 metres. Waterman couldn't get to it. So just a little bit of uh, time now where there's been no action as Dean Wallace just sits back and cools himself on the boundary line. Sheedy down on the boundary line as well, Jared. Close to quarter time. Well, a big push out from Dean Kemp. It was a relayed one through Chris Danaher onto O'Donnell. It was like a pinball. There's Kevin Sheedy Barks instructions. Nice kick into Barnard. Time for another goal for the Bombers. Long kick. Punched away by McIntosh. Through comes Hetty once again, getting in plenty of the action early. Thrown away by Cockatoo, Cockatoo Collins, having a good game for the Bombers. And away they go through Morrison. Morrison's kick is not too bad under the circumstances. Close to the line, it bounces over before Damien Hardwick can do much with it. And it'll be thrown in right on centre wing. Barking instructions, Mick Malthouse and Trevor Nisbet from the boundary line for the West Coast. Great rivalry between these two clubs, set up by two champion back pocket players with Richmond in the uh, 60s and 70s and probably even into the 80s. Mick Malthouse and Kevin Sheedy coaching the respective teams here today. Lovell's short kick is all right. It's been marked by Mitchell White. Minute left in the quarter. Mitchell White may score from here. Rain falling now at Subiaco. It was a beautiful day. At about midday, showers were predicted and they've finally arrived. Under a minute now as Mitchell White prepares to shoot for goal from 50 metres. Could nearly get the distance. Throws it up in the air. Across the face of the square. It's going to be a mark taken by Sumich and it's been given the all clear from behind Berbikov. So Sumich will have the last kick of the quarter you would think. Not very far out, only six or seven metres from goal but the angle will be a tight one. Kevin Sheedy must be thinking seriously of swapping Berbikov and Fletcher. I think uh, Sumich looks a bit strong for Berbikov and uh, uh, who is it? Uh, White too mobile. For Going Fletcher. for the screw punt kick hits the post. Well, you've seen that before, Lou. Sumich uh, hitting the post side. with the check side. Up, yes. <laughs> Played as big a part in the ending of the Collie Wobbles as any other kick in football. Once didn't hit speaks. the post though, Jared. Didn't, didn't hit the post. Right. It just went through from behind. And the Eagles now trying to form a bit of a zone to defend this kicking, but half a zoning and half is still man to man. It's hard to swap a strategy in the middle of a quarter in this regard. Well, just six seconds left to play. I'm sure the players would like a time clock. 
There's Damien Hardwick. We'll just see the siren sound. Ran out time nicely, the Bombers. As Kevin Sheedy charges onto the field, he'd be pretty pleased to be back in a competitive situation after the Eagles burst out of the blocks, kicked a couple of goals without the Bombers looking like it. So at quarter time, the West Coast 4-4 have a three-point lead over Essendon 4-1. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just uh, having a look at Kevin Shetty as he's walking out to address the, uh, the Essendon players there, and really it was a, a terrific second half of the quarter for Essendon. I mean, that first five minutes when the Eagles kicked their three goals and the crowd was really involved and the emotion was up and running, I mean, that really didn't look good for Essendon, but they really fought their way back to make it a fairly even game at this uh, quarter time break. But again, uh, I would, just wouldn't be surprised. Mitchell White, again, his mobility at centre half forward's been good. I think Sumich has been pretty strong at uh, full forward, so the uh, S and Q defenders may have to be adjusted. So at quarter time, the West Coast have a three-point lead over the Essendon Bombers. And some interesting setups at the uh, ruck encounter. Lucas has done well oh. there. Barnard robbed of it there by Schofield. Knocked away there by Hardwick. The ball very, very keenly contested. This is Hardwick off his left foot. In towards centre for well picked up at uh, ankle level there by Alessio. Handball away to Buick. One bounce. May set himself up. Little left foot Ooh. kick to centre foot. Dump. Got it back again. Then kick with the right foot. In towards full foot. Nearly gathered by Hurd. Knocked away by Olorinshaw. Chance for Plumfield. Then Olorinshaw once again goes after it. Can't control the footy. Opportunity for Mercury. Was that a throw? Lucas is there. And the umpire quickly on the scene may have deemed that as being a throw against Mark McCurry and the free kick. Away go the Eagles. Gehrig in the exchange of hand passes. Hetty in turn to Kemp. Gee, household names with the West Coast Eagles now. Brett Hetty and Dean Kemp. The kick in the Cousins' direction, but Wanganin is there. In goes Banfield. Can't control it. Boundary throw in between wing and left half forward, slightly favouring the West Coast. These boundary throw-ins are interesting because Lucas and Donnelly are the two ruckmen, but they're really just going nowhere near these boundary throw-ins. So... It's really just the two tallest players will compete. In this case, uh, who will it be? Fletcher and, and White. White. Almost a free kick given away to Fletcher there. O'Donnell dragged out. So Hayden Kennedy will uh, elect to play a neutral ball here and throw it up on what is a perfect surface here at Subiaco. Fantastic opening term. Both sides kicking four goals. Fletcher over the back. Gets the ball going forward. Ola Renshaw, O'Donnell, knocks it forward now for the Bombers, but picked up by Waterman, kicks it into the Eagles forward line. Good spoil over the back. Cousins, always smart with his hands, gets the ball onto David Hart from 50 metres out, kicks it long, Berbikoff getting back. It wasn't a great kick, that one. And it's trickled over the boundary line. That's right. Young player, Ben Cousins, but he's a fantastic ball handler and he's really impressive. Touches the ball immediately, he takes possession. West Coast with a slender lead, but they have the ball deep in their forward line. Sumic and Berbikov go for it. Once again, Cousins. This time, Wanganin along the ground. Wasn't a great kick. Morrison evades a couple over to Lovell. Lovell kicks it to an open forward line. Only Bombers there now as Berbikov comes charging through. Bruce McAvaney thinks he's got a good name for a horse. So the two-miler charges it down and finds Scott Lucas. I don't think he'd like being referred to as a two-miler, Peter Berbikov. Maybe a... Maybe a mile horse, but anyway, he's a great defender for Essendon. Under pressure back there at half back for the West Coast was Hetty. Then Gary in towards the centre. Metropolis gets it to Schofield. Schofield running fairly direct. Kicks in towards half forward. Barry Young just gets his hand onto the football. Simic dragged oh. to the ground. That's a free kick? No. The hand pass out for Banfield. Banfield's kick only as far as Harvey. Very important possession for Mark Harvey across half back. He kicks it wide. This is Olorenshaw, 50 metres from the defended goal. Olorenshaw runs closer to the wing. Gets onto his favourite left foot. Kicks it high. Marking contest. Alessio, well done. Good mark taken by Stephen Alessio on centre wing for the Bombers. He can get it onto Mercury. Mercury runs up to half forward. Well done, Kemp. Just held him up. Forced him to kick towards the contest. Hurd gathers. Hurd's kick across his left shoulder is wide. Very wide. Missed everything. Free kick back there to take, be taken for the West Coast by Fraser Gehrig. Gehrig for the West Coast. 
they lead by three points. The score has not changed from quarter time. 4-4 four, four to 4-1. Four, Two goals each to Sumich and Cummings. Both leading for their respective teams at this stage. This is Gary. No one really to kick to, so he's going to have to bomb away. Gets good distance with the kick. But he's kicked it in the vicinity of Alessio. Couldn't take it, but McCurry roped it well. Quick hands now on to Danaher. He's got a bout of the fumbles. His handball goes only as far as Downsbrew drives the Eagles into attack. At the back of the pack was Lovell. Couldn't quite take it. Through comes Wanganui. Quick hands off the ground. Was good to Young. Young finds Ola Renshaw. Game going up a notch in intensity. Kick goes up in the air. O'Donnell was infringed upon by Schofield. No free kick, says the umpire. And they're letting it go a bit, Lee, the umpire. Well, they are, yeah, but it's, as long as it's consistent, I think players can adjust. They're certainly making uh, everyone earn their free kicks. Aiden Kennedy with the ball inside the centre square. Lucas versus Donnelly. Doing well, Lucas. Quick kick off the ground. This time it's Danaher. Needs to pick it up cleanly. In pursuit was Matera. Dumps Danaher to the ground. Alessio bundled out of it. So too was Cockatoo Collins. Perhaps another infringement. The ball once again shaken over the boundary line by McCurry. And in hot pursuit was Matera. Well, we're nearly 10 minutes into the second quarter and the umpires have only awarded seven free kicks. Five to the West Coast and two to Essendon. Now you speak about them allowing play to go on. This is Hart. Tries to hack it out of there. Buick quick to recover. But his kick slews off the side and it favours Morrison, who was marked from behind Barnard. Morrison, one of the exciting young Eagles, younger players. His kick goes across the half-forward line. Nearly gathered by Waterman. It is. He had a second chance at it. Shepard affected by Donnelly on Lucas. Waterman runs up to 50 metres. Can ping away from that line and kicks it to the square. The mark has been taken by Sumich. Good clean mark in the goal square to Peter Sumich from behind Damien Hardwick and Peter Berbikov. And he'll line up for his third goal. Well, I must say, Peter Sumich today has uh, been the best I've seen for a couple of years. I think this would be enormously encouraging for the Eagles. He's marked strongly on uh, those three or four occasions. Uh, maybe his lead career is still there. Well, the Eagles fans think so, as he punts the goal and puts it through. Three goals, two to Peter Sumich. Eagles lead by nine points. They're 5-4 to 4-1. And importantly, he's marked strongly. It's, he, that was his fifth mark. And uh, I think Peter Sumich recently, when he has played senior football, he just doesn't look like he's been able to mark the ball in a contest. But uh, he's certainly done that to this point of the game today. And uh, that's something that would be enormously encouraging for Nick Poldas and the Eagles. So the West Coast Eagles leading by nine points. Peter Sumich with three goals to his name. Perhaps we're seeing a new player reborn after the birth of his baby girl a couple of weeks ago. Quick kick out of the middle was from Schofield. But it was intercepted by Gavin Wanganin. He crosses the ground, finds Mark Harvey. Harvey sets himself, ignores Ola Renshaw, looking for the bigger players, going down to Barnard. Heard once again, roving beautifully up the ground is James Heard, looking for plenty of kicks, and this one's a Fine one looking for McCurry. A pretty good effort in a one-on-one -on -one contest by Daniel Metropolis. It's a decision to be made. Heard went into the centre bounce then and uh, O'Donnell dropped a half forward and Gary stayed back with O'Donnell. And, uh, we'll just see how long that matchup remains. Schofield at the moment directly opposed to Heard. It's a bad sign for Ruckman, right? Yes. <laughs> Alessio taps it forward to O'Donnell. Off the ground was Plumfield. Just left of the big post for a minor score. Yes, I can't say I've ever can recall two such mobile non ruckman types in uh, Donnelly and uh, Lucas actually filling the ruck positions. Now it's Metropolis. Drives the Eagles out of defence. Through comes Lovell, getting his hands on the football. Donnelly running clear again. It's a good handball. Sits nicely for Donnelly. Donnelly drives the ball in, finds White. The forward line of the Eagles is really causing some problems. Over the back was Ola Renshaw, couldn't quite take it, got the sit on Morrison. 
quick hands, finds Young, back to Olorenshaw, in comes Cousins, he's dangerous, he'll finish up with the football, looking for Sumich now, Kick smothered, and out of bounds, right on the forward 50 for the West Coast Eagles. Well done again by Peter Berbikoff there, defending grandly for Essendon, 50 metres from the West Coast goal, the Eagles lead 34 to 26, 13 minutes left in the second term. Mitchell White doing the ruck work up against Berbikoff. The ball spills for Wanganee. Gets the hand pass away. This is Barnard in towards Hardwick at centre half back. Hardwick's left foot kick. Bit of an up and under towards the wing. Contest. Players can't really clear the football away from there. So the umpire will bounce. Umpires Mark Nash, Greg Scroop and Hayden Kennedy. And we've already spoken about uh, Mark McKenzie who was listed to do this match replaced at the last minute by Hayden Kennedy. Three goals to Peter Sumich for the West Coast. Two goals to Scott Cummings for Essendon. The ball in the middle of the ground. Gee, some desperate stuff shown there by Berbikoff again, was it? Dollar inch or it was. He's going to get the football. His rewards were there. O'Donnell's kick will land close to half forward. Gathered by Blumfield. Must have thought he had an eternity. Quickly taken away by the Eagles. Gee, there were four into that pretty quickly. Matera, Hedy, McKenna and Morrison. The kick goes to half forward to be safely marked by Wanganeen. Well, he had to take it too because the Eagles were away if he didn't. Over to Young, back to Wanganeen. Wanganeen looking for Fletcher. Looks like that change may have been made, Lee. Yes, uh, about five minutes ago, I think Fletcher went back on the Sumich and Berbikoff out onto White. Fletcher looking for his skipper in O'Donnell, but it's intercepted once again by McKenna. White on his left foot. Looking for Cousins in front, he's been infringed, no free kick once again, off the ground was level, back goes Sumich. Wanganoon chips a kick, looking for Harvey. And Harvey with plenty of time it seems, spears a kick into Chris Danaher. 13 possessions to Wanganoon across the full back line, kick by Chris Danaher, sits up, good contest between Cockatoo Collins and Matera, oh. on this occasion, Peter Matera a bit upset. Collins, the man in front, he kicks it quickly to Buick. Buick is still on the wing. Long way from Essendon's goal. Essendon have only kicked a point in the second term so far. The West Coast, one goal, kicked by Peter Sumich. Buick's kick will land close to the 50 metre line. McIntosh, good mark from behind Cummings. Clean mark to Ashley McIntosh. Get out of the way, James Hurd, says the umpire. McIntosh gets back and then kicks high and long. Will land close to the wing. Mark Pate to Chris Danaher. The Eagles fans not happy. They've had the worst of two market decisions in pretty much the same area. Hand pass to Hardwick. Hardwick's kick. Will land close to centre half forward. Punch back towards the middle of the ground. Taken by O'Donnell. Kicks quickly, directly towards goal. Marking contest. The ball spills to the back. Gary does well. Knocks it into the park of Hedy. Hedy with a little bit of time to steady. Kicks out close to the wing and puts it on the chest there of Mitchell White. Good composure there by the Eagles defenders. It's a good game. As the kick goes towards Lovell. In hot pursuit was Barry Young. Once again, another throw in on centre wing. I think Fraser Gehrig has got the uh, speed and the height to go with James Hurd. It remains to be seen whether he has the stamina. Big push out in the back there by Berbikoff. And the umpire, with the applause of the crowd here, finally gives the West Coast Eagles a free kick. Eight free kicks, five to three in favour of the Eagles. So they're having to work pretty hard for three kicks, the players. As Daniel Metropolis puts his foot into this one. Sumich once again, couldn't take the mark. Pressure's pretty good on there on Buick. Buick bowled over, could have once again got a free kick, as could have Hardwick. Advantage played as the ball comes over to Hardwick. He's kicked it into space. Matera leads Olorenshaw for the ball. Nobody's going to drag down Matera. Oh, his kicking was slightly astray there. He had a bit of time with Blumfield in the shoot. Kicked it out of bounds on the floor. Could have nearly ducked back onto his right foot. Still, that's pretty easy from here, isn't it? Ola Redshaw's kick. Knocked away. Gathered by Schofield. Gee, his option to duck back towards the middle of the ground is a good one. He kicks in towards centre foot. Great leap there by Berbikoff. Couldn't take the mark. Gatherers by Morrison. Just gets his left foot to it. Should nearly be gathered by Hardwick. He does well and has a second go at it. Well done, Damien Hardwick. But the kick has been marked by Brett Hetty. 
looks to play on and does so. Gehrig from left half back kicks it down the line and finds Lovell. Andy Lovell between wing and left half forward can go to a player unmarked at 50 metres. It's Donnelly. And the Bombers not quick enough to regroup there. Left Donnelly on his own. 50 metres from goal. Could nearly get the distance and the accuracy. Lovely kick by Donnelly. It's been marked anyway by Simic again. He is proving a handful for Essendon. That is Peter Simic. I think it is also highlighting this game one of uh, Essendon's great susceptibilities there. Uh, a strong mark in key forwards do trouble their defence. Sumic from the goal square, one metre out, kicks a goal. Four goals, two to Peter Sumic. Very much a key player so far. 6-4 Eagles, 4-2 Essendon. Yes, and again, Donnelly slipping forward from that ruck position. Uh, it'll be really a question of whether Scott Lucas, as a young, inexperienced player, can... Uh, be able to know and get the positioning right. Just maybe Stephen Alessio is about to have a run in the ruck position. Ball back in the centre shortly. The ball just taking a bit of time to get back into the centre. Actually, one of the umpires, Greg Scroop, had a really good long chat to Peter Sumich then, Jared, as the boundary umpires brought the ball back to the centre. That'll be just saying what a great game he's playing, Robert. The change is being affected. Dean Wallace coming onto the ground, and it looks like Berbikoff having a rest. The player gets underway. Wallace straight down to Sumic, one would suspect. Running in that direction. So Dean Wallace off the bench to man up on Peter Sumic. We'll wait and see what happens to uh, Dustin Fletcher. Fletcher now to come maybe down onto the forward line because McIntosh there on his own at this stage. Maybe Scott Cummings, he's either filling in in that key defensive position or he's been shifted up there. Chance for the Eagles, White down to Downsborough. Downsborough in the Sumic direction. Chipping in was Young, couldn't take the mark. Good contest, Sumic again. Across his right shoulder, he's dogged it. Five goals in the first half to Peter Sumic. you want to know who the number one Eagles player on Subiak Oval today is, right now it's Peter Sumic. He may just be seeing the resurrection of elite career. I uh, must admit I was one who thought Peter Sumic's days as a good AFL player may have deserved him, but really been an exceptional first half and certainly he's got his confidence going and that's very important basis to build your game on. Well maybe it was Mackenzie Sumic, born a couple of weeks ago that has inspired this Return to start it by Peter Sumich. Five goals in the first half, a great performance. But this time it's Alessio. Quick kick out of the centre, but the Eagles are just growing in confidence as Gehrig takes a good mark. Quick kick plays on. Over to what is going to be another Brownlow medal chance in white. Kicks it off the ground, gets it to Hart. Hart back into the centre of the ground. There's talent all over this ground here for the Eagles. Kemp on the Waterman. Now in defence, over to Metropolis. They're running well, the Eagles. Good interception by Wanganeen. Over to Ola Renshaw, playing it well. Pressure comes from Cousins. Wanganeen still off, brilliant around the boundary line. But in came Peter Matera, just to stop what was going to be a Keith Gregg like, es like escape off the line. And another throw in. Seven minutes left. West Coast by 20 points, courtesy of a wonderful first half by their full forward, Peter Sumich, who's kicked five goals. The kick lands at half forward. Hetty plays it well. Just kept his body between himself and the football. Between his opponent and the football. Kicked away by McKenna and goes over for a boundary throw in. So it's obviously that Downsbury is going to play ruck against Alessio. It just might have been that because Alessio didn't start in the ruck, Donnelly just happened to be there for the Eagles rather than something of a pre planned tactic. It just happened that way. Smoking Joe Mercedes on the ground. Straight on to Brett Hetty. Blumfield to have a spell on the bench. Up high was Alessio, beautiful tap for Chris Danaher. Danaher's left foot kick, lands in the middle of the ground. Gather is by Banfield, handball. A beautiful hand pass to the advantage of Lovell. Lovell goes across his left shoulder. Morrison in the van, can he control the football? He's beaten for it by Hardwick, another one of the young guns on this ground. He's kicking to the middle of the ground. It's taken by Barnard. Barnard's long kick will land in the square. Fletcher, great mark and missed. Well, it was a mark, wasn't it? Played on and 
missed from the goal square nearly. Much to the delight of the Eagles fans. Well, I suppose it's hard to criticise him playing on because really he was a, a clear shot, whatever happened, just really a bad disposal error. Waterman brings the ball back into play for the Eagles, finds Kemp 30 metres by himself. Downsborough's also got some space, he's got support running in material, but he ignores this and goes down to the half forward line where Donnelly taps the ball over the line. Material is shaking his head, Jared, because yeah. he's making great position for Downsborough. Well, the handball is certainly the option. But as you said, Robert, it's pretty easy from up here. So we're 70 metres away from the Eagles' goal. They've kicked three goals in this turn. Jared Schofield under pressure. Ball now with Matera. Kicks it blindly to the forward line. Morrison in front. Hardwick applies good pressure. This time coming through was Young. Young over the top got, has got Ola Renshaw. The Bombers working a man free now. Drives it long looking for Fletcher. Love to make amends for that last shot at goal. Punched away nicely. Coming up with it now as Banfield gets it back to McKenna. Real clear for the Eagles. McKenna's kick along the line is well directed. Found Mitchell White. In turn went to Waterman. Pass was quite spectacular for Cousins. And White has just run beautifully after delivering the hand pass. He shoots for goal but lets himself down a little by missing quite convincingly in the finish for the Eagles fifth behind. He certainly runs in that centre-half forward position, Mitchell White. He's uh, never a stationary target. He's always running to space. And at the moment, Essendon struggling to find a defender. Now Scott Cummings, but struggling to find a defender who can actually keep up with him. O'Donnell with five minutes left. Short kick is OK. He finds Ola Renshaw between left back pocket and left half back. His kick is all right as well. And the marker's taken down there by Cummings. Scott Cummings for the Bombers. He's their leading goal scorer at this stage with two. The kick quite uh, simply marked by Metropolis. Well, he made it look pretty easy. Nothing much as easy on a football ground. Kemp and then Hetty. Eddie into the pocket, the mark is taken by White. They look a little rattled, the Bombers. Very important five minutes left in this game, you would think. 7-5 to 4-3, 20 point margin. They wouldn't want it to break out to much more, the Bombers, if there to be a chance in this game, you would think. Beautiful day, magnificent crowd at Subiaco, and watching an entertaining game. Short kick has been marked by Kemp. Improves the angle, maybe not all that much closer. The way Peter Sumich has gone in this quarter with three goals, you just kick it straight to him. Well, Dean Kemp, he is a good kick of the football. He kicks from 50 metres. He gets good distance. But it's just offline to the right and through for one behind. And Mitchell White, centre-half forward, 16 possessions at a half of football at centre-half forward is a good numbers, almost Wayne Carey-like. They must, one must say, playing a fairly different uh, brand of football, but getting a lot of stats. Not dissimilar to James Heard, the way he plays, yeah, though. similar to that, yeah. Well, Gary O'Donnell looking for an option, finally gets one in Hardwick, but he's covered well and truly by Peter Sumich. Now he plays on. He's got Chris Danaher. Takes a pretty good mark under pressure from Kemp. Yeah, those figures there, Luke. Kemp and Danaher. Alessio. Seven and six to Kemp. O'Donnell, Lucas down in the forward line now, picks it up pretty well, kicks it round the corner looking for Fletcher, he's out in front, strong mark, read it beautifully, just a couple of yards in front of Ashley McIntosh. A pretty well aligned ball, we see Lucas's kick to Fletcher, but uh, the two players you mentioned, Kemp and Chris Danaher, 7 and 6 to Dean Kemp, 7 and 4 to Chris Danaher. So a good tussle in the middle of the ground. There's Dustin Fletcher, lines up for goal for 40 metres out, and this is a great kick. All clear. Yes, so the that... first goal to the Bombers in the second quarter, it's 5-3 to 7-6. Well, so they had to work hard for that uh, goal, Leston. Really, the, uh, this quarter's gone very much to the Eagles. Well, they're having trouble penetrating that half-forward line. James Hood was all right in the first quarter, but... At the moment, Gehrig has probably shut him down reasonably well so far this quarter, and uh, it's really just a struggle to get the ball in.
So three minutes left in the term. A very important goal to Essendon. Kicked by Dustin Fletcher. Banfield's kick smothered very, very well by O'Donnell. The ball at centre forward. O'Donnell follows it up. Kicks it out of the air, but it's a free kick. A holding decision. It may have gone against uh, Stephen Alessio at centre half back. Uh, it's got Lucas actually, and the free kick is to be taken by Waterman. And pretty well, Scott Lucas in the ruck contest around the middle of the ground. He's been asked to do that against Donnelly. The kick by Waterman goes across the ground, and the mark is taken out there by Hart. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. It's been a very, very entertaining game so far. David Hart's kick will land close to half forward, but it's been marked by Harvey for Essendon, looking for a 50-metre penalty. By Scroop having nothing to do with that. Harvey's kick goes in towards the centre. It's knocked away by the Eagles defensive Gary. Nearly gathered there by Schofield. Opportunity for Downsborough off the ground. Oh, well done by Donnelly. He made it for himself. Left foot kick by that player towards full forward. At the back there of Lovell. A contest. Morrison. He's dispossessed down there by, by uh, Lucas. Now a chance is for Schofield. Handball. Wider for Sumich. Can he gather? Gets the hand pass back in the direction of Matera. Matera, short kick. No, not good enough. Wanganu, away to Ola Renshaw. To the advantage out here of Mercury. His kick has been smothered there by Necropolis and forced Four. over for a boundary throw in on the full, was it? Yeah. So the free kick to Mark Mercury. Chips it in short for James Hurd. A little bit quieter in this term after a dominating first quarter. Gehrig has tightened up on him, as Lee said. Looking for Alessio, too strong. And the Bombers now with a chance to kick another late goal in this second term. Well, it's a good sign for Eston, the fact that uh, Fletcher took that mark and goal before, and now Alessio's marked in the forward 50, really up to this point of the game. Had a little bit of a problem for getting on the end of that long high kick going forward. Well, he's just struggled to get into the game, Steve Alessio, with just two kicks and three handles, but an important one from 45 metres, but he's pulled it. Another minor score to the Bombers. They'll move on now to 5-4, 34. 14 points in arrears of the West Coast Eagles, 7-6, 48. Just 39 seconds left to play in this second term as Chris Waterman drives the ball out, looking for but not finding David Hart. Good spoil for ball trickles over the boundary line. Spoil coming from James Hurd, I think it was. Lucas, I think Scott Lucas flashed up there, so uh, I'll take that as said by the cameraman. As we see another boundary throw in. 50 metres out from the Bombers' goal. Lucas at the back. Gets the ball going the Bombers' way. Over the top went Waterman. McKenna with quick hands. And again from Kemp on the Banfield. On the hard. Maybe a chance for the Eagles now. They'll need a mark. Donnelly underneath, big punch away, over to White's had a great first half. Jared Schofield, 14 seconds left on the clock. Schofield from 40 metres, great goal, the Eagles. And Lee, that one would have hurt going into half time. It wasn't just a fan, fantastic transference out of defence, really. Uh, once the ball went to centre half forward again, Mitchell White, I think it was. Schofield a beautifully balanced kick on the run but it was the transfer out of the defensive uh, 50 by the uh, Eagles clean ball handling under pressure gave it to the player running forward and a really a great attacking goal well a shot missed at one end by the Bombers and then a great goal to the Eagles after a succession of handballs finished with Jared Schofield and he is deadly accurate in front of goal so with six seconds to play we'll go one more time Alessio Kemp couldn't take it. Ella Renshaw up in the air as the siren goes to finish what's been a great turn for the West Coast Eagles and Peter Sumich in particular with five first half goals. It's 8 6 54 to 5 4 34. Well, yes, and I think you mentioned Peter Sumich, and I think the important thing was he, he kicked five goals a few weeks ago when I saw him play, but I thought they were lucky five. I thought today he's just earned every one of them by just really strong marking overhead. And uh, you, you know, can kick him from hand passes over the top or lucky free kicks, but he's absolutely earned every one of them. And really, it's been a fantastic game, I believe. I mean, just the skills, the kicking and the ball handling under pressure. It's just been a, such a quick, fantastic exhibition of Australian world football, I would have thought. 
Well, it was four goals two to the Eagles to one goal three in that term, which just about sums it up, brother. Yes, it was a good quarter by both sides, but the Eagles have got the advantage at uh, half time. They lead by 20 points. They're 8 6 54. Essendon a 5 4 34. So the start of the second half here at Subiaco, the West Coast have the advantage. They're 20 points in front of Essendon. So the Bombers probably need to get at least the first goal of this third quarter. Perhaps the first two goals. No mark at half forward. Taken by White. Gets the hand pass back in the direction of Kemp. Kemp gets it to White again. Two possessions already at the start of the third term for Mitchell White. Off to Morrison. Morrison's left foot kick will land close to the square. Matera knocked away there by Masidi. Gathered by Sumich. This would be just quite miraculous if he could dob it from there. He's missed everything. Out of bounds on the full free kick to be taken in the right back pocket. I think, a miracle, would Dean have, Wallace. I think a miracle would have been the understatement. Robbo facing the boundary line of his left foot over his right shoulder. A lot of things would have had to go on right for that to go through for a goal. I think there would have been the odd supporter at the ground here getting a little excited as Wallace kicks it away from full back for Essendon. And a good mark is taken out there by Stephen Alessio. Just starting to have an impact, uh, Stephen Alessio, in that last 10 minutes of the second quarter. He gets a handball onto Hardwick. Hardwick going forward now. Danaher couldn't take it. Well done by Hetty. He's tackled without the football. Metropolis comes in, smothers the ball, and a boundary and a ball up will take place. 75 metres out from the Bombers' goal. With the Bombers desperate to get that first couple in this third term. Alessio too tall now. Flicks the ball, looking for Masidi. Off the ground with Schofield. Quick hands for McCurry. Nice kick from O'Donnell, looking for Fletcher and finds him. So the move by Fletcher to full forward, starting to pay dividends. He kicked one in the second term, could have been two. He certainly played in front, and when the ball, that's the way to take the first step is something a forward should be able to do, because obviously his teammates the uh, kicking the ball forward, and Fletcher certainly did that. So for the first goal in the second half, Dustin Fletcher runs in, kicks it pretty accurately. But hit the woodwork. The thing's not, just not running right for Dustin Fletcher at the present time. It's amazing if you keep on pushing how the wheel will turn. One goal, two for Dustin Fletcher. Leading goal kicker for Essendon is Scott Cummings, who kicked two in the first quarter. Kick in. He is very wide and ugly. Very ugly by Guy McKenna standards. Out of bounds, so the free kick for Essendon, taken by Fletcher, gets it into Olorenshaw. He's still 50 metres from goal, Ricky Olorenshaw. Just a little hesitant as to whether to just bomb away to the square. Kicks to the front of the goals. Marking contest. Oh, it's an Essendon mark. Terrific mark taken by Chris Danner there. Gee, that was a good grab. Yes, it was, and he's just been a very good player, hasn't he, for, uh, for Essen down here. Gradually almost got better as his career has gone on. Had the big job on Kemp today, but to jump up and take this mark. And he capitalises by kicking an Essendon goal. So very importantly for the Bombers, they do get the first goal in the second half and bring the margin back to 13 points. 8-6 the Eagles, 6-5 Essendon. Yeah, the high psychology is important to get the first goal, particularly if you're the team that's behind on the scoreboard, and as, as Essendon are, and uh, the ability to get the first six points reduces the margin and just really lifts the whole team at the start of the second half. Yes, he's been a great player for Essendon, Chris Danaher, and now he puts some pressure back on Dean Kemp who comes out of the middle with the ball. He's getting, putting the answer to Chris Danaher, left foot, looking for White. Once again, Mitchell White, he just has the knack of running into space and coming up with the football. Got great skills and has found Jared Schofield. As we mentioned earlier, he's deadly accurate in front of goal and from 45 metres, this should be well within his means. Eight marks, 14 kicks and six handballs to Mitchell White. The nose clips have been uh, popularised over the last six or so months we saw them frequently used at the Olympics just clearing the nasal passages breathing in the oxygen and let's see if he can use that oxygen to effect comes in from 50 it's a long kick just touched on the line by Dean Wallace 
We picked up Peter Sumich in the last five minutes of the second quarter. And I think that may well have been his first touch for the afternoon. It's 8-7 to 6-5. It's a margin 14 points in favour of the West Coast Eagles. The margin at quarter time was three points in favour of the Eagles. And it was 20 points at quarter time. O'Donnell kicks it to himself and then gets very good distance. Well past the 50 metre defensive line. Olorenci has taken the mark. Gets it to Buick. Buick's little left foot kick is a bit of a tumbler. Not all that good for your forwards when it comes in like that. Simply mopped up by Chris Waterman. Safe mark on his chest. He's had a good game, Rick Olorenci, with 14 possessions on the tier and now only eight. Well done, Buick. If it's not a mark, it's certainly a free kick. Level just a little late. Buick, he has got a crook shoulder. He gets up a little gingerly. As they say, the shoulder joint jumps out a little bit, uh, I'm told. It looked like he felt that blow, didn't he? Well, quickly on with it. He kicks it in towards centre-half forward. McIntosh at the back. McCurry ready to swoop on it. Chance here for Mercedes. James Hurd tries to get it in that player's direction, but uh, not quite all that successful. And uh, the umpire will bounce about 60 metres from the Essendon goal. He's ran as a genuine on, on ball today, uh, Darren Butte. Normally plays a small forward... Uh, Matched up by Darren Hart. They've had Darrell Hart. They've had a good duel. So 15 minutes left in the third quarter. The tap down for Buick. Buick goes bang. Look at this kick. Right to the line. And the two Collins read it well, but the ball just bouncing away from that player and through for one behind to Essendon. One suspects that uh, the extra height of Alessio could be a telling factor in this game. There's now no Ryan Turnbull to throw at him. After it worked well for the Eagles in the first term, maybe it'll count against them as McIntosh gets the ball out of defence for the Eagles. This time it's Banfield looking to control it. He can't do that inside the boundary line. Yeah, I have little doubt, Jared, that if Alessio had started in the ruck, Downs would have started with him. And I think Donnelly was only in the ruck, uh, in fact, because Alessio wasn't there. Alessio was such a big advantage over Downsbury. Even. He's going to win just about every knock as he does this time. Gets it to Hardwick. Always tacked to his defensive side. Ball is smothered. Through comes Waterman. He's got support in Matera, but a good tackle by Rick Olorenshaw once again. O'Donnell will use his left foot to set up Lucas. The Bombers just looking a little bit better in this second turn, but Lucas fumbles. Left foot to the goal square. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle. Fletcher and McIntosh. Cockatoo Collins good to gather it. And a ricochet behind is the result. This is no doubt the momentum of the game is with Essendon in this first part of the uh, third quarter. Whenever the ball goes to space, it seems like there's two or three Essendon players uh, there on the end of it. Well, you mentioned that you thought that they'd broken even uh, round the ground. It was really only the key forwards, uh, in particular Sumi, that was the difference. So perhaps they're just got starting to get on top again now. As Downsborough just can't make the extra metres to get that football. And it comes off hands. And Little Boy Blue will throw it in. West Coast lead this game by 12 points. Very little in it. Important passage of play here. Kemp just scrounges it out to Schofield. Runs away from the half-back line. Hand pass to Hetty. Hetty's kicked towards centre-half forward. Well done. Good mark again by Mitchell White. He's certainly been a problem for Essendon. He's kicked towards full forward. And it's a Mark Sumovich. Say Sumovich. Huh? And then I was going to say Sumovich. And you get Sumovich out of that. Let's see if he can kick, 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 kick. Go on, Robert. Oh, Robert. Great skill, isn't it, Justin? He knew where the flight of the boy, knew where the ball was coming, led his hips into Dean Wallace, and really just was able to protect the ball and then take that uh, falling chest mark. It really was wonderful body use. Well, he's kicked five. Five out of eight, when you only lead by two goals, has to be pretty well classified as a match-leading performance at this stage. Maybe in the final analysis, a match-winning performance. He's now kicked six. Six goals, two to Peter Sumich. Eagles lead by three. Yes, and again, that problem we spoke about up to half-time with Esther. Mitchell White marking the ball at half-forward. And then Peter Sumich marking the ball closer to goal. Those two key forwards for the Eagles are the two players uh, that the Bombers haven't been able to shut down. Great goal to Peter Sumich and Mitchell White. 
ball back in the centre. James Hurd in the centre bounce. As Alessio once again pushes his opponent out. Good work there to get the kick forward. Danaher running onto it. As was McKenna. Tap over by Cockatoo Collins to Metropolis. Gehrig in the band now. Fletcher over runs it. In comes Danaher once again. Runs into a brick wall. Fletcher off the ground. But Waterman leads Lucas to the ball to repel what was a promising attack by the Bombers. Just a short chip kick going to Gehrig. Gehrig was heady, I think. Herrick heady off the ground. Gets it to Kemp. Kemp hooks one over his left shoulder. And sitting underneath it, waiting for the steam train to come through was Hardwick. He didn't take the mark. It was a courageous performance. Paddy Devlin, right. He kept his eyes on the ball, but really it was a floating floating high kick and eventually Banfield. But Hardwick certainly did everything he had to do to attempt the mark. Doolan warming up on the bench for Essendon. Preparing to get back onto the playing arena. Schofield to Banfield. This kick into the middle. Knocked away. Lovell. Barnard. Is that a free kick? No. Umpire just says play on. He's not far from the action. And eventually decides on a bounce. So and Chris Danaher has come off the field and Doolan has replaced him. Now one would think he must have an injury problem. I wouldn't have thought that the play determined that, you know, that move. Well, Doolan's still on his own at half forward. Kicked away by O'Donnell, and the mark is taken by Mercury. Mercury to just bomb away. It's a good long kick by Mark Mercury. It's a goal. Essendon get their seventh. Mark Mercury's first goal. And yes, I think this Celestio uh, situation in the ruck, I mean, he has really done very well in there a comparative to Downsbury and the pairing that was on earlier in the game and uh, Essen really are getting a bit of momentum going at the moment if they can uh, sort of shut down the Eagles scoring power up the other end they just look uh, much more dangerous going forward in this uh, third quarter it's two goals to one in the third term Mark McCurry you'd be loving this ground it is generally the best surface that we've seen for a long time a CD out of the middle Bombers doing it well out of the centre bounce clearances Gehrig looked for the free kick but Hurd comes up with it, dances and weaves his way back into some trouble there. Finally, it was Metropolis. That was a throw. Wasn't paid against him. Waterman off the ground. Morrison versus Doolan back on the ground. Sets up his teammate Barnard from 50 metres out just inside. He shoots it. Goal over the back was Fletcher. Couldn't quite take it. Hooks it round the corner. Good pressure by the Eagles. Heady under pressure. Tight and fierce in defence now for the Eagles. As finally McKenna clears the ball to Waterman. Waterman looks downfield, then kicks in the Mitchell White direction. He's taken about a dozen marks, Mitchell White. Away to Banfield. Banfield, cousin slips his opposition, runs away, but a great chase provided by Barry Young. Slung Cousins off the ball. Gathered by Harvey, he's in strife. Play goes on. Still a chance for Donnelly, the handball. Harvey down by Sumich. Still the play goes on. By G, you've got to get a kick and earn it here. Mitchell White shoots the goal and breaks the deadlock. Great goal by Mitchell White. Unbelievable passage of football resulting in a goal to the Eagles. They lead by three once again. And it came up really from the defensive work of the Eagles forwards. They just wouldn't let the ball out of the uh, out of their forward line near Essendon. Was a, some really flurry. Great tackle by Sumich. And then really Mitchell White. Great composure. One step, bang, goal. Well, the good news for the Eagles that they scored the goal, but Ben Cousins has just been uh, carried off the ground. Looks to have hurt a knee, perhaps. We'll get a talk from uh, Dwayne Lamb, a message from him shortly. Lucas had his kick smothered. Cockatoo Collins, sharp hands over to Barnard. Barnard wheels around. He's kicked it a long bomb into the top of the square. It's McIntosh versus Fletcher. McIntosh couldn't take it, but heard around the corner. Replies for the Bombers. They've got their eight. Plenty of support here for the Bombers, and they're certainly turning it on in this third term. I think there's one very important player on the ground. Here you see Barnett, a good uh, centre, got the ball out in front of the goals and eventually Heard got the ball and scored. But the last two centre bounce clearances have come through Joe Masuti. He started on interchange. He's really only he's had a short game. He could be a critical player. He really is a great ball getter if he's got a little bit of freshness about him. And uh, last two centre bounce clearances would be interesting to see whether he might be the midfielder to really give us the impetus. 
Well, West Coast lead by two goals. They led by 20 points at half time. Up high was Downsborough, but Essendon a chance to get clear again. Oller Renshaw to O'Donnell. O'Donnell's kick to a one on one between Hurd and Gary. Gather is by McCurry. He's kicked the goal. Curry has kicked two, and there is only six points in this match after Essendon trailed by 20 points at half time. Well, this really is a fantastic game of football. I mean, really, we spoke about the skills early in the game and the pressure, and it's got it all, really. And some really quick hands, the quick hands for O'Donnell. And have a look at Cockatoo Collins here. It's just a give it and give it. And then McEwen did the finishing, but it was the really quick give and give uh, by Cockatoo Collins under intense pressure. He was the one who gave it to Barnard for the goal before. Really, this game is open for grabs. Certainly when there's only 19 goals being kicked, it's got to be centre clearances, and Alessio has been such a tremendous influence in this third quarter. We well, played the first half at centre-half forward. This time it's an even go. Got Cummings, though, bursts off the back of the line. He comes through with the left foot. The Bombers in attack once again. They're on a roll, but that roll has just been stopped by Guy McKenna. And all of a sudden, it's Essendon in control. McKenna to Matera. I think Matera has been eclipsed by Ola Renshaw. It's a pretty good effort by him having his first game for 96. And Dean Kemp comes up with the ball once again. Oh, and have a bit of a dig at each other too. Ola Renshaw and Matera just off the football there. Dean Kemp with nine kicks, nine handballs, having plenty of the football. And this fellow, well, he might not be quite as good as Wayne Carey, but he's certainly in the next level of uh, forwards, certainly this year. Downsborough gets the ball forward. The Eagles in attack, good work by Wallace, desperado stuff, gets the ball off the ground, Hart couldn't take it, nearly cut the shirt front, hands by Schofield, over the top, quick hands, gets it to Downsborough from 30 metres out, he's replied, what a great goal, a great game. Great hands, Tony Evans. And the West Coast Eagles now lead by 8 points, 11 to 7, 73 to 9-7. 61. Well, they've maintained this two-goal lead, but really it's taken some uh, terrific play to do it. Again, a quick hands here. Downsborough run off for Alessio there for once. He has to be able to do that. Alessio's going to be too tall in the ruck contest. Downsborough has to really trouble Essen at ground level. So it's goal for goal in this third term. The West Coast Eagles now lead by two, point, two goals. And the parochial crowd certainly have found some voice. O'Donnell once again takes it from Alessio. Heard underneath it, great hands, the young champion. Wheels around, gets the ball moving quickly, looking once again for it. And finding Dustin Fletcher over to Cockatoo Collins, always dangerous. Bobs comes back on his right foot, has a bounce, has to go all the way himself. Ball in the centre of the ground, McCurry for his third. A great goal to the Bombers. Will this goal onslaught stop? This is a great game of footy. Oh, <laughs> tremendous game. It's the best game I've seen this year. Yes, yes, it's just, it's primary. You can't, you're almost off your chair. It's just a fast, open, flowing game of football. And there wasn't a heap of scoring done in that first half, really. But now the, both sides have got the scoreboard ticking over. And uh, really, Essen are coming at them. Eagles have to keep scoring. But you don't have to see big scores kicked in a game of footy, do you? I mean, this oh, is no. a good example. True, there's pressure, but there's really... Uh, that's a great spectacle. I'm enjoying it. I hope the viewers are. A goal of difference. West Coast lead. We've got eight minutes left in this magnificent third quarter that has seen the players just reach another level. Lucas bursts his way through. Forces it forward for Essendon. James Hurd. Have a look at the skill. He falls over. Maybe important. He drags it back in the oh. lead. And that is it's always a risk. Now, umpire. It is always a risk, though, if you fall over and drag it back in. I know it looks criminal. I think that was a correct decision. Once you've dragged it under, you have to successfully be able to knock it out. And Hurd was unable to do it, so it was a free kick. Well, the Bombers have got their adrenaline pumping. Scott Lucas's mark was good. Harvey takes the hand pass. It's a contest right in the centre of the ground. Mercury's lifted. All Bombers players have lifted. Mercedes kicked towards full forward. Knocked away by McIntosh. Gathered by Hurd. <laughs> Scores a level! They're tied up at 11 7 apiece. Goal for James Hurd. Just fantastic again. Uh, Harvey took the punt of going in. Really fantastic trap there by McCurry. Spun round. Again, Masudi, who's just starting to get the ball as a fresh midfielder. And Hurd, well, is always dangerous. And one thing you know about Hurd, 
He's going to keep going a lot better the game keeps going. And whether Gary has the stamina to run with him the whole game, that's really what's going to be tested. Over seven minutes to play in this third quarter. One of the best terms of football for the season. mercury has got three and Hurd's got two for the Bombers. The Eagles need a reply and through comes one of their champs in, in Kemp. His kick was smothered and here comes another one in Matera. He needs to lift for the Eagles. He comes back into his right foot and kicks it long. He's looking for Sumich. It won't get that far. Harvey come over the back with a punch. Pushes out his player in Donnelly. And finally, we'll get a little bit of a respite here. And Rob, I've been a great critic of cricket grounds in the middle of football pitches, but when you get a stage like this, it, it's, is, it is fantastic. And the standard of play is lifted accordingly. Centre breaks in the third term. Fav certainly favouring Essendon. And that's indicated by the scoreboard. The umpire slips over. Peter Matera, nearly run down by Ola Renshaw, gets the hand pass back to Lovell. Lovell across his left shoulder, will lob the ball nearly in the square, but a good mark taken by Cummings. It gets back across that full back line. Kicks the ball across that line to Mercedes. Mercedes can run outside the 50 metre defensive area. He kicks it out towards the wing. The mark not taken at the back. Downsborough does well. So too does McCurry. Gets it to Alessio. Alessio's kicked the centre half forward and a well judged mark by Gary. Hand pass to Hetty. Hetty short to Donnelly. Banfield. Hand pass again. They've got numbers in the middle of the ground. Waterman. Out wide. Lovell. Just makes a bit of a path here for Mitchell White. Barry Young to run him down. Gives away ground back to David Hart. The intensity in this game is quite magnificent. David Hart's kicked to the goal square. Marking contest, Lovell from behind. It may bounce through, though it's close. It's knocked over by Scott Cummings for a rush behind. And you quite wonder whether giving, even giving away behinds in a game like this is going to be critical in the final wrap-up. I think a very good player for us in this quarter has been Scott Lucas, who's now playing on half-back opposed to Donnelly. They started the ruck together, and I thought Lucas has really run through hard off the half-back line there and really given us something there. Well, at three-quarter time, at court, at half time, the Eagles led by 20 points. The Bombers have got that back now to just trail by one point. Over the back was Barnard. Couldn't quite take it. Good hands from Doolan onto O'Donnell, onto Hurd. Great mark by Hurd. Gets away from Gary. He'll take him on with pace. He wants another goal. He's third for the turn from 50 metres out. He's gone. Goalwards. It's home. And what a quarter <laughs> by Hurd and McCurry. Three goals apiece. And well, that was just sensational, wasn't it? I mean, the ball is, it was, I suppose, what you call a 55-45 marking chance, and he marked it, but then he just took off at ground level, ran to 50 and drilled it. And the three goals to Hurd this quarter, he's really just lifted Essendon and himself. They've now kicked seven goals in this third term. The West Coast Eagles just three, and the Bombers have rested the lead by five points. Knocked forward by Downsborough, but O'Donnell has been quite magnificent around the centre bounces as well. A great captain's game by Gary O'Donnell. Knocked back towards centre half forward. Chapoka to Collins. James Hurd. Darren Buick goes in. Can the Bombers get their eighth? Buick has missed. Slices the opposition up, Darren Buick, in that situation. Took it too easy. He actually tried to really ease the kick when he really had to run at the goals and drive it hard. And that's the way to keep it online. So Darren Buick, just two behinds. He is a goal-kicking small player midfielder. This is McKenna. Four and three-quarter minutes left. Looking maybe to settle the Eagles down. They've been absolutely bombarded by a barrage from the Bombers. The kick close to the wing. Nearly taken there by Donnelly. Bump. Maybe, no, nothing happening. The umpire says throw it in. So 12-8 to 11-8. Essendon lead by six points. Very much an important game if you are considering the makeup of the final eight after the roster games are finished. The top four sides have no fear about travelling interstate for a final. And both of these sides are endeavouring to finish in the top four. And I think uh, Mick Mould has been a bit concerned about Joe Masuti because Banfield has now gone in on ball to uh, pick him up and Kemp has gone to half forward. And Evans has gone forward uh, when Cousins went off and he's probably trying to drag Wanganoon out of the play. Banfield's kick back to the centre. 
Lucas, magnificent play from half back. Oh, 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 Magnificent mark. He'll play on. He'll go in, and the Bombers will lead by two goals. It's all clear. Don't worry about that. Two goals to Shea Cockatoo Collins, and the eighth goal of the quarter to the Bombers. They lead by 12 points. And again, I mentioned before about Scott Lucas. He just come hard off the half back line, took the ball with him, ran and drove it forward, and then Cockatoo Collins just had to sit. Beautiful floating mark and uh, really been an exhilarating quarter of football. The adrenaline's flowing through the Essendon bodies at the moment. And they're not the only ones, Lou. <laughs> As we go once again with three, nearly four minutes of play remaining. Alessio in the middle. He's dominated this third term. Buick hooks it round the corner. But to no avail, Metropolis just took an easy mark. No pressure whatsoever from Essendon there. Gets it onto the running McIntosh. The Eagles need a reply. They've got Banfield. Quick hands now to Sakura on for his first run. That's his first kick in AFL football. Wasn't exactly where he wanted it to go as Damien Hardwick has come up with the football. He moves now into the centre of the ground. Once again, it's Alessio. He's becoming a match-winning force in this game. Harvey runs across him. Now gets the ball. Lost his opponent in the shuffle. Harvey once again looking for the tools down there on the forward line. It's Barnard. Who's having a bit of a, an impact, Robbo, despite being a wingman. Centre breaks, Jared Essendon, 17 to West Coast, 9. That is progressive, but I would suggest that it's probably been something like about 9 to nothing in this quarter. Yep. Well, Paul Barnard fancies his chances, unless he's just going for the dummy, waiting for a lead. But from near on 60 metres out, he lets one fly. There's a bit of a win behind him. Big pack in the back. Off the ground was Cockatoo Collins. Another miracle goal. Out of the air. And the Eagles are shell shot. Well, it's incredible the noise though. There is plenty of support. Yeah, there's plenty of, them. plenty of red and black supporters in the ground. Not obviously outnumbered, but certainly a bit of noise from that cheer squad. Uh, and really been a fantastic quarter by Essen, as we've said many times. But I think the breeze is pushing down to that outer end. So uh, the Eagles will be coming home within the third quarter but they've really got to stem the flow around midfield. The uh, centre bounces, that whole midfield area. Uh, Buick, O'Donnell, Masuti have taken over in there, and Alessio's ruck, Alessio's ruck work has just started it all. McCurry been terrific too. He's kicked yep. uh, something like two goals in this term already. They've kicked nine goals to three in this quarter. And Mick Malthouse quickly down on the boundary line to prepare for his three-quarter time address. Bearing in mind the Eagles led this match by 20 points at halftime. They now trail by 18. So it's been a 38-point turnaround in about 25 minutes of football. Eagles under pressure across half-back. This is Hetty. They've got a chance here. Downsborough should be on the end of this. He can get round onto his right foot. Nearly run down there by uh, Barry Young. And the kick towards full forward has been marked by Lucas. He's a good young player, is Scott Lucas. Gets good distance with the kick and favours O'Donnell. Looks to play on, does O'Donnell. Down the line. Fletcher couldn't take the mark from in front of McIntosh. And it's over for a boundary throw in. Two minutes left in the term. O'Donnell with something like, uh, what, 19 kicks, Gary O'Donnell. He's been a terrific leader. Probably his best game for quite a number of weeks, I would suggest. Two minutes left in the term. Fletcher to do the ruck work. McIntosh to go after it to the advantage of Evans, accordingly to Banfield. Banfield's kick is beautiful. Puts it on the chest of Donnelly, who on this occasion has outpointed Scott Lucas. Very rare in the last 10 or 12 minutes, Lucas has been terrific. Donnelly takes a, a bit of a gamble. The ball spills to the back. Sakura, has he got the skill to dob this? He hooks it too far. And it's through for a behind. Kick by Shane Sakura for the Eagles. 17 points the margin, 14-8 to 11-9. We're very, very close to three-quarter time. Wanker Lee just a chip kick to himself to get the Bombers clear. Nothing was offering, so he's finally gone for the boundary line. And I guess the uh, we could say, Lee, that at least the opposition haven't come up, come up with it. They haven't. Just under a minute and a half of play remaining. 
in what's been a magnificent third term here at Subiaco. It's interesting on those kick-ins. The Eagles have played man-to-man -man all day, but uh, I don't know whether the Essendon have been able to take full advantage of uh, getting a player moving to that space out wide. Uh, I think the Eagles just like to play one-on-one -on -one and they take the punt and do it all over the ground. Lucas against Donnelly. Kemp comes up with it, quick hands, looking for Shane Sakura. He's jumped on by a couple of Essendon players and they're, boy, they're playing with some confidence and desperation now, the Bombers. It's interesting, Chris Danaher on the bench there. He kicked a goal in this quarter. Very quickly went to the bench soon after that and it's just been an avalanche of Essendon goals since then. Buick, that hand pass, that attempted hand pass, just intercepted by Barry Young to force it over for a boundary throw in, Sakura. Here's Mickey Malthouse. Well, he's got some concerns now. Mind you, even though there were only 13 goals kicked in the first half, they were still in this match, Eston. Dean Kemp's kick to the goal square. Sumich has got it. No, he hasn't. Buick overrun. Kick clear by Cousins. Hard it was. Now a chance for Wanganoon. Little left foot kick. Good smother there by Cummings. Not able to clear the congestion there, though. Evans gets it back. Sakura kicked forward by Banfield. No one home for the Eagles. Time ticking away. And Wanganine, a gallant defender. Good kick to Fletcher. Mercedes. Back to Mercury. Oh, brilliantly done by the Bombers. They get out of that half-back area for the Eagles. And Fletcher's kick will land at half-forward. Gehrig now under pressure goes for the safety of the boundary line. And that shoulder we talked about of Darren Buick, I think that uh, chronic shoulder problem has popped up again. He's just about to leave the field. Yeah, when the shoulder just comes out a little bit, they end up with a condition known as dead arm, and they can't move it. It just feels uh, incredibly painful. And what was uh, a golden opportunity for the Eagles has now gone begging. Boundary throw in. Alessio gets onto it. James Hurd swings one way, swings the other. He's kicked. The score will not register. But it has been quite a magnificent third quarter by Essendon. Probably the best, best quarter of football that I think we've seen for the year by the Bombers. Maybe by any side. They kicked nine goals in their third term to the West Coast three. They turned a 20-point deficit into a 17-point advantage at three-quarter time. And they lead 14-8-92 to the West Coast, 11-9-75. Kevin Shooty ran to the end that was Essen were kicking to that quarter to have the three-quarter time huddle there. Must be some strategy behind that, but I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, maybe that's just because where the ball was, he wanted to get them in, but the, really the momentum and the morale of the Essen team, they just worked so hard. Gradually their confidence lifted and uh, it was a fantastic quarter and really the Eagles have to turn it all around this final quarter to win the game. Well, in the last six games, the Bombers have lost to North Melbourne, Brisbane, Bears and Carlton, all sides above them, and have beaten Hawthorne, Fitzroy and Richmond, all sides below them. They currently have a pretty handy lead of 17 points, so we'll come back after the break and we'll probably find out a little bit more about where Essendon exactly sit in 1996. A very important first five or six minutes in this match now, the start of the last term. Essendon lead by 17 points. They're 14-8 to 11-9. If the Eagles are to win this match, you would think they would have to kick the first goal. But it's Alessio's kick the centre half forward. It's punched back towards the centre. Nearly gathered there by Lucas. The ball spills. It was Blumfield. Went in after it again. And the umpire will be forced to bounce just wide of centre half forward for the Bombers. I think the Eagles recognised their midfield was badly uh, down in the third quarter. And Evans and Lovell, two fresh midfielders in Kemp. They've gone in there this quarter. Alessio to do the ruck work. Doolan's handball. O'Donnell. Back to Lucas. Lucas off his favoured left side. Gets good distance across the half forward line. It spills. Cockatoo Collins tries to tap it to the back. Gather was by Waterman. He was under enormous pressure. Essendon playing with spirit. Cockatoo Collins to Ola Renshaw. Ola Renshaw knocks it forward. In goes Mercury. Top the two Collins again. Matera to take it over, and the boundary umpire will throw it in the left forward pocket for Essendon. I think Peter Matera pretty pleased when he turned around and saw the umpire signal ball it in. Because there was just a hint of deliberate. A 
about that little execution over the boundary line. Out of the boundary, throw in goes Alessio's, kicked it straight up in the air, underneath it, McIntosh. Metropolis punches it out of the air for the safety of the boundary line. See, the momentum certainly with Essendon, isn't it? Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Stephen Alessio has given him an armchair ride since he's been moved into the ruck. He really has been a dominant force. Once again, the ball deep in attack for the Bombers. Alessio just doing what he likes out of the ruck now, coming up against Chad Morrison, a jockey in comparison. It's Fraser Gerrick and Mark McCurry will have a wrestle over who comes up with the ball. Alessio is even pushing into Essen's forward line now and uh, doing the ruck work down there. We'll look for Alessio to take this one out of the bounce. This time it was Downsbury, comes over the top, Hurd swoops on it. Lovell underneath it, he's been a little bit quiet since half-time. Kemp up in the air, Donnelly versus Lucas, he's been great Lucas since half-time. And Chad Morrison just edges the ball forward for the West Coast Eagles. So we're just a couple of minutes into this final turn. And Essendon 14-8-92 have a 17-point lead over the West Coast, 11-9-75. It's been some time since the Eagles have kicked the goal. Bit of a non-event, the boundary throw in, quick hands from Blumfield, finds Doolan. Yes, I think Alessio will c continue to come up and do the centre bounce ruck work, but after the centre bounce, uh, Lucas is virtually going on the ball and Alessio is pushing into play as a permanent forward. Well, he's a terrific leaping, jumping, athletic young man as Scott Lucas. Now this time the ball falls to Evans at the back of that uh, boundary throw-in. Mitchell White, that could be paid as a mark. He's taken about 13 now. He's kicking the Sumich direction. Knocked away. Chance for the Eagles here. Schofield gathers. Back to Lovell. Lovell, snapshot from about 40 metres. This is off to the right was Andy Lovell. His first score for the day, just a behind. Peter Sumich, the leading goal scorer for the West Coast, has kicked six. All the others are singles. And for Essendon, they've got three players who have kicked three goals. And most of them came in the third quarter. Mercury, James Hurd and Cockatoo Collins all have three against their name. Kick in by O'Donnell, finds Mercedes. Mercedes. Still within scoring distance as far as the Eagles are concerned. His kick finds Fletcher. And now it will be well out of danger from the Eagles' point of view. Fletcher's kick towards the wing. Good mark taken by Schofield. Yes, they need a lift in the middle. The Eagles if they're to get back into this game. Jared Schofield, just the sort of player, can weave some magic and deliver the ball forward to Sumich. Looking for Donnelly this time. Big punch over the back from Lucas. He's done that exceptionally well today. Lovell. Left foot looking for Sumich out in front. Right hand Sumich under extreme pressure from Wallace. Tremendous mark on the lead. Toughest spot to take him out in front of the eyes. Well, it has, but it's still a difficult, uh, difficult mark. The arms have to be extended so that you uh, prevent the defender getting his uh, fist to the ball. And uh, with straight elbows, it's not easy to have the hands soft enough to be able to take possession. But Sumich was certainly able to do it then. Brilliant kick from Andy Lovell to set Peter Sumich up for his seventh goal for this afternoon. He'll be the hometown hero if he can kick the Eagles to a win here as he pulls this one back to Cusbury Ben. We'll leave it to the umpire. They need the goal, the Eagles. You can see this first few minutes of the quarter that they've sort of stabilised the general play situation, but they need to actually get that goal or two to really get the action of scoreboard ticking to really get the general flowing. Chris Danaher warming up on the uh, on the boundary line. He's got a bandage above his right knee. So it might be a bit of a problem for Essendon. Buick in trouble with the shoulder. If they come away from half-back, Ola Renshaw and Barry Young. Barry Young's kick will land close to the boundary line. Gatherers by Barnard, he's grabbed. Able to get his kick away though, which was quite effective. And a good mark taken in the back pocket by McKenna. He can switch play. He'll go straight across that half-back line, looking for Matera. Matera hemmed in close to the line, gets the kick away also. Out towards the wing. Hardwick is there. He's run down there by Banfield. Ball spills over for a throw-in. You notice Brett Hetty then was following uh, Barnard to the ball. He must be feeling the pinch. First game for uh, 
fair while for the Eagles at senior level. Interesting stat, West Coast last goal, 17 and a half minutes into the third quarter, so it's been a dry run for a long time. Look at the pace of Kemp, able to run away, then guides the ball beautifully towards half forward, the mark is taken by Donnelly. Now Donnelly must kick this goal, you would think, if the Eagles are to pinch this game. They led comfortably at halftime by 20 points, but a magnificent third term by the Bombers, in which they kick nine goals, sees Essendon with the lead at this stage, although it is only a 15-point margin. Sumich missed just a minute or so ago from a straightforward shot. So the Eagles fans watching Andrew Donnelly's kick for goal will go close to the line. It's punched over by Dean Wallace for a boundary throw-in. Left forward pocket for the West Coast. They trail Essendon. West Coast are 11-11. Essendon are 14-8. Port throwing this one. Sumich looking for a free kick. Comes up to Cousins. Gets it to Waterman. Gets rid of Wallace. Hooks it round with his left foot. And hits the post. That will be a kick to Essendon. Gavin Wanganin. He needs some composure here. He's got to try and maintain possession, the Bombers. They're under siege. Their lead is slowly being whittled down. One suggests that if... A goal is scored by the West Coast. This game will be well and truly in the balance. Blumfield, young player showing plenty today. Spent some time on the bench, but when he gets the football, he usually makes the right decisions. This time he goes for Lucas. Donnelly's an expert in the air. It's been a great battle since uh, those two have matched up. The two fairly young players. Lucas, uh, much younger. Really, he's very promising player, Lucas. Only very uh, still a teenager, I think. Plenty ahead of him. McIntosh in the front spot, Fletcher over the back, gets it moving forward for the Bombers. Morrison takes it over the boundary line, looks for a free kick, but not forthcoming. I think rightly, Robbo, the umpires have put their whistles away and you really have to earn your free kick. Yeah, well, the free kicks, there's only been 13 awarded. Nine have gone to the West Coast and four have gone to Essendon. And it's been a, a great contest. Dustin Fletcher does the ruck work. Nearly robbed by Dean Kemp, Lovell, to Evans. Was that legal? Back to Gary. Was that legal? McIntosh, yes. Then eventually it has to have been awarded a free kick for a throw against the Eagles, and it's taken by McCurry. McCurry, good kick too. Terrific penetration. Cut the kick off. Bears off his nose. Matera, McKenna. Usually something comes of this. McKenna runs away, but the kick goes to a one on one. Oh, great mark. That's paid. Terrific mark to Young Cousins in front of Wanganine. Very important position. On centre wing, the West Coast have the football. They trail by 15 points. Cousins, his kick will land at centre half forward. At the back, Wallace. Sumich can't get his right foot to it. Tries to hack it out of the congestion. Umpire will bounce at centre half forward for the Eagles about 45 metres from their goal. Yes, but well, the Eagles supporters thought that Summer should have come up with a free kick. Wallace dragged him out of it as he uh, didn't have possession of the football, but they've only played the absolute obvious ones this afternoon as Heard takes the ball out of the bounce, handballs blindly. Dangerous times now for the Bombers. Off the ground goes Schofield. Back with Heard. Cool in a crisis. Goes backwards to go forwards by Joe Masudi. But he's just blazed the ball away and hopefully it'll go out to the boundary line. Kept in by Matera. No, it's not. Oh, must have only been centimetres in that. Dennis Cometti was here, he'd say that was centimetre perfect, that one of Joe Mercedes. Because it looked as if Matera had plenty of time. Bird once again, forcing the issue, throws the ball away and he's paid a penalty. Alpine's actually played advantage, it comes to Drew Banfield, he drives it into looking for a mark. Sumich couldn't quite take it, Ben Cousins gets the ball away, doesn't quite affect a good handball. Kemp takes the football, Wanganeen bustling and hustling, he gets it over to Hardwick. And finally, some relief and some respite through Doolan. Gee, the football's hot and the play is intense. McIntosh tries to take the mark. Gets back onto his right, then kicks with his left. In towards the pocket, nearly taken by Wanganoon. Cousins gives the hand pass back. Looks for Evans. Handball to no one in particular. Smothers the ball off the boot, does Tony Evans. In goes Barry Young and just holds it up there for the Bombers, importantly so. And 
the umpire will bounce about 45 metres from the West Coast goals. Hey, James Hearn does everything but carries your baggage. He's in the ruck now, and Lucas has gone to some half forward. 12 minutes left. Up goes Donnelly. Chance for Cousins. Andy Lovell will go in and get a goal. The 12th on the scoreboard for the Eagles. First goal to Andy Lovell. And it pulls the margin back to just nine points. And we've got 12 minutes left in the match. Yes, and certainly it's been a different quarter this one to the third quarter. The Eagles have really been forcing, forcing the ball forward all the time. It was critical, however, they got that first goal because really they were, were looking dangerous, but they just couldn't put the pressure, the scoreboard pressure on the rest of them until that goal. Well, the Bombers now lead by nine points, and Kevin Shooty has summoned Stephen Alessio from full forward once again to go into the row. Well, I think he should go to the centre bounces, Jared, and then he'll push into the forward line after that. The following closely is the bounce down favours the Eagles downs, but Kemp nearly gets decapitated, good enough to get through. Maybe Pan played against him. Interesting decision from Hayden Kennedy. Well, he had two or three chances to get rid of it. One kick now. Into the forward line for Essendon, over the back, this cockatoo Collins, he couldn't take it. As all the players are looking for a breather. This is Australian rules football at its finest on a fantastic surface. We're seeing a great standard of football. James Hurd split this game open with three goals in the third term, as did Mark McCurry. Hurd once again takes the tap, kicks it up in the air, looking for a high fly. Couldn't quite get it was McCurry. Now comes down, goes backwards, looking for Joe Masuti. But under pressure, the handball goes astray and it's out of bounds as Chris Danaher. Just reminds Kevin Shooty of his right to come back on. He's got his right thigh heavily taped. He has been jogging around the boundary line, suggesting he's ready to go. James Hurd again, a high leap. Alessio, kick is reasonably effective. It's right in front of Essendon's goal. It's kicked away on the full by an Eagles player. May have been Metropolis. Back there in that full back line, Andy Lovell was in the action as well. So it's a free kick to Eston to be taken by Barnard. 11 minutes left. Paul Barnard. McCurry leads, ignored. Barnard kicks. It goes across the face. It's knocked through for a rush behind to Essendon by the Eagles' defence, so it is 10 points the margin. Time remaining in the left corner of the screen. West Coast by 10 points. They only kicked one goal in the last quarter of football. They kicked their 11th goal at the 17-minute mark of the third quarter. They kicked their 12th goal just a little while ago through Andy Lovell. Top effort out there, a great effort by Smoke and Joe Mercedes. He's been awarded the mark. Away to Hardwick. He drives the ball into the forward line looking for Alessio. The big man couldn't quite take it. Fletcher, smart tap out for Cockatoo Collins. He's got some skill also. He came up against a player that reads it as well as anybody, Guy McKenna. He put his hand on it and stopped it flat as Cockatoo Collins comes off the ground to be replaced by Chris Danaher. Shane Sakura warming up for the Eagles. It's 40 metres out from Essendon's goal. Hetty takes it, comes back onto the left. He has a look and all he can see is Chris Danaher, so he goes to the boundary line. It's a pretty smart kick in the finish. Well, it was, really, it's a question of which side I think you keep the nerve. I mean, Essendon have got the lead, but it's really a pressure-packed game, and mistakes could well determine the game as much as the offensive good play. Metropolis offers a core is once again Alessio's dominance and height. In the ruck, pays dividends, through comes Evans, gets it to Lovell, having a good last turn. This kick isn't a great one. Goes over the head to O'Donnell, yes, it was a good one. Banfield quickly on to Sakura. Sakura looking for White, but he's beaten by Cummins, who fumbles it crucially, but comes back with a fine second effort to get it over the line. Haven't done this much work for a long time, Walt. No. <laughs> well, it's just everything, it's just everything is, the game is so much in the balance and every player is just giving his all, it's, uh, it's really something to watch. Mitchell White, talented player, puts it onto Gerrick, slowly onto Kemp, sets up Sakura, goes for a run, 
He's picked up the tempo pretty well. The youngster playing his first game. Sumich looking for a free kick. Waterman off the ground. It's rolling towards goal, but Lincoln Lee coming back, just picks it up, steadies himself. Kick wasn't a great one. Over the head of Young. And through comes Sakura. The hot play 40 metres out from goal with the Bombers leading by 10 points. Nine minutes left. Boundary throw in about 40 metres around from the Eagles goal. Every person at this ground still in doubt as to the result. Is that kick? It's going to be penalised. Oh, in a tight game like this. Well, he's an interesting character, Greg Stroop, because he hasn't, uh, Stroop, he hasn't paid a couple of free kicks that were fairly obvious, I thought, and up he comes with a controversial deliberate. Kemp's kick will find McIntosh. He drops the mark. Still on the goal line for the Eagles, and well done by Dustin Fletcher. The umpire will have to bounce right on the goal line. Have a look at this from Wanganeen. And that is unbelievable. Anyway, it's all over and done with. Scoreboard, Essendon 14-9, West Coast 12-11. Ten points the margin. Chance for Sumich. Oh, he's just squeezed it through there, hasn't he? What? Mitchell White. Pretty short. Well, it's only four points the margin. Essendon lead. Mitchell White capped off a fantastic game. He couldn't have had a, a more needed goal in his football career, I would have thought. Well, it's a great goal to the Peter Sumich lookalike in Mitchell White. We've got two great forwards at either end of the ground as Evans comes forward. Andy Lovell having a big turn. Over to Donnelly from 40 metres out. He shoots a goal, but it's a wide. Sumich this time. Just behind to bring the margin back to just three points. In what has been a classic game of AFL football. Yes, and skipper Gary O'Donnell will go down and take the ball for the kick out. Kevin Shooty barking instructions on the telephone. Time for cool heads now, both sides. Chris Danaher, good in a crisis. He's got a good track record over many years. Gets it to Duel. He played on. It's a great tackle. And another decision by up by Greg Scoop. It will impact heavily on this game. Dean Kemp, no one takes him out on. He goes long. At the back of the pack, it's Banfield. Can he get his foot on it? No. And good defensive work there by Damien Hardwick. So he's another point on the board to the West Coast Eagles. The score 13 13 91. 14 11 93. The Bombers, they lead by two points. I was talking about an errors could well determine the game. Well, umpiring decisions, the key umpiring decisions could also. That holding the ball, the out of bounds over the other end. They're just decisions that could have gone either way but went towards the Eagles on the, on the day. The kick in has been well marked by Laurentiol. He is at right half back. He looks to get the hand pass away. Kick forward by Blumfield. It bounces awkwardly in the middle. Lovell tried to get it to Kemp. Lovell tackled. Ball spills. Tony Evans squeezes a kick out. It lands inside 50. No mark. Sumich to come out and tackle Cummings. The ball still there to be won. What can Cousins do? Cousins! The kick has been marked by O'Donnell. He's working tirelessly across that full back line. Just goes across the line where Wanganeen has made good position. He's marked in the left back pocket. No one to kick to. Scott Lucas is a long way away. But the short kick has been marked by Mercedes. Mercedes is still in his defensive 50 metre area. His kick out towards the wing. Good oh, mark, okay. terrific mark taken at the back by Alessio. Gets the handball across to the middle of the ground. Kick forward by Harvey. It'll land. Oh, good mark. Top mark taken by Blumfield. One-hander. Kicks quickly towards full forward. Matera knocks it back. It's at centre half back now for the Eagles. Hand pass by Schofield. Gives Morrison the chance. Morrison a lovely kick with terrific penetration. Back goes Cummings. Eagles fans look for a free kick to White. Cummings kick to Masidi. Mercedes handball to Harvey. Essendon standing up at this stage. The kick should be marked by Morrison. It's not paid. 
Morrison gets an important foot to the ball. Evans back to Schofield. Tries to outrun, then Banfield. Back to Waterman. Down the line. Chance for Evans again. Onto the right foot goes Tony Evans. And the marking contest at the goal front. Still there. Sumich dragged off the ball. So is Cousins. Wanganeen. He won't make a mistake with this one. Dean Wallace in lots of strife. Now Cummings. Oh, the set bounced out. Oh, there were centimetres in that one too. Well, the pressure is absolutely peaking here. Young players really lifting. We saw a great mark to Blumfield. Just five and a half minutes to go. Chad Morrison, another first-year player, played the Victorian VSFL last year, also rising to the occasion. Donnelly versus Lucas. Dot Lovell had a great turn. Gets the ball forward. Can they keep it in, though? Two points, the margin. The home crowd with the Eagles. Tip Mick Mulhouse just establishes a little bit of strategy for this last couple of minutes. Tip a winner. <laughs> I'm trying to do that all year without much uh, success. Yeah, yeah. The ball in 50 metres out from the Eagles goal. Schofield once again. The pressure has been enormous and great credit to the Essendon back line because they have been under enormous pressure for about 10 minutes and really haven't succumbed at all. What would you do, Luke? Uh, not a coach's game now. It's now up to the players to just play it out the last few minutes. Lee Matthews sitting on the fence nicely as Evans <laughs> comes through. Wanganeen had a great game. Gets the ball quietly with a nice little handball. And that was down to Justin Blumfield once again. McKenna on to Hetty. Hetty goes wide looking for Donnelly. He's a great mark and that is no exception. Just plucked it out of the hands of McCurry who looked at the umpire hoping that it would go the other way. Let's have a look at this kick. It is fantastic, really. Donnelly Jones, he started the ball, started the game in the ruck and did pretty well for the Eagles there. Well, fade, the the kick the ball then he went short. Great tackle there by the Eagles, ball still alive. Your heart would be in your mouth if you're Mick Malthouse. I was saying before, sometimes as a coach, with a few minutes to go, scores are close, you sit back in your chair and say, well, it's up to the players now, they've just got to play it out. It's this kind of game for this last few minutes. Well, it's anybody's ball here as McCurry comes up in an important position. Once again, it'll go over the line. We'll just keep Alessio up on the forward line, though. Well, I think I'd be inclined to push him, push him up because the Eagles have got all the momentum, so I think the, uh, the rap work here, which Alessio has, uh, Alessio has dominated against Downsborough, uh, would probably be a good thing to do. Well, if they can just break away from half-back, maybe Alessio might be a key player as far as the mark's concerned. Look at Waterman's kick. There is a goal, game-winning kick by Chris Waterman, a goal. Waterman's first goal, and in the dying minutes of the game, there's less than four minutes left. The Eagles have reached away the lead. They're in front by four points. And it just curled round on the left foot, and the crowd ran up. We all knew it was through, and really, it's been a fantastic quarter of football by the Eagles, but with only a kick in it, it's anyone's game. Ball back in the centre, the Eagles lead by four points. Heard the man for the moment, comes through, gets tackled out of it by Lovell. K Kemp comes through, desperation from all players as he barreled by Barnard. Messenden have only kicked a point in this last quarter so far, Jared, And the Eagles have added three goals, four. Well, surely they've got to leave Alessio on the ball now, Lee, with... Yes, I think so, because really the game's been now played pretty much in Essendon's uh, uh, in the Eagles' forward half, although Essendon now have to score to win. Well, it's Alessio once again with the Downsborough. Kemp coming through. No free kick. The Eagles fans disappointed. Coming back with courage was Guy McKenna, who takes a pretty good mark on the chest. And no wonder he does it so easily. He keeps his eye on the football at all times. Backing back was Cousins. Another great mark in similar circumstances by this young player who has shown so much here for Perth, for the Eagles this season. Great kick. But coming up with it was Scott Cummings out in front of Mitchell White. And he's actually done pretty well, I think, Cummings on White. A mongrel floater, ricochets through to Kent, ball bouncing Eagles way now, gets it over to McKenna, he's got a loose man wide. Muddy Waterman once again. 
and he's raising the ball over his hands and suggesting he's going to slow down play but with two and a half minutes to go they're going to have to score another one to be safe Kemp has been enormous in the clinches enormous they get that in the midfield in the third quarter and uh, Kemp's gone in there and really that's but Evans and Lovell Lovell's been very good in this quarter too and they've been able to rest the control back uh, which Essendon had in that third quarter well from near on 60 metres out Muddy Waterman to be the match winner for the Eagles he kicked the last goal he's got onto this one it's pretty straight but it's going to lob short Sumich couldn't take it and Wallace he's done a pretty good job for the Bombers in defence just rushes it over for another behind the West Coast Eagles 14-14-98 it's a five point lead now over Essendon 14-9-93 Take us home, Robert. Well, I think that this, and uh, they just have to take a lot of risks now. I mean, they've just got to quickly get a goal to win the game. They've only been able to kick a point. So O'Donnell takes the punt, doesn't quite get hold of it, kicks it straight down the ground. James Hurd, now Masidi, in turn, kicked forward by Barry Young, but only as far as Guy McKenna. And he is such an experienced player. The short kick. Oh, oh. gee, that's an indiscretion. That is a shocker by Ben Doolan. 50 metre penalty will put Sakura within scoring distance. Yes, there's a time for aggression, there's a time for composure and control, and uh, I think that's a wrong time for aggression from Ben Doolan. He hasn't really had a big day Ben Doolan he started on Matera and gave away a 50 metre penalty in the first quarter from which Matera kicked a goal and now this 50 metre penalty on Sakura has given this young man the chance to kick his first goal in AFL and he'll rub salt into the wound if he dobs it he's oh. at the post so two behinds to Sakura but from a, uh, a result point of view, the Eagles now lead by six points and there's a minute and a half left. And the draw becomes an option. Scott Cummings on the left foot, needs a mark. McCurry leads the ball in front of Hetty. Needs to be poised here, does it well, gets around, makes some space. Looking forward for James Hurd, the ball drops short for Cockatoo Collins, comes back out to Barry Young, he's under siege. In goes Guy McKenna, who's been unbelievable in this last couple of minutes. Heard couldn't quite take it away. But here comes Smoking Joe. He's kicking the ball high once again, looking for Heard. The back of the pack came through. McIntosh, kick, quick kick off the ground. McCurry once again under siege. And a great tackle by Evans has come up with perhaps a match-winning tackle. 55 seconds left of this game to play. So, Matera receives the hand pass from Kent. Matera goes into the pocket, too short. Mark is taken by Fletcher. Still the Bombers a chance to snatch it, but they need two or three clean possessions to go straight down the ground. Fletcher kicks into the middle of the field. James Hurd up high, couldn't take the mark. It rebounds. Olorencio beaten for it. Kick forward by Sakura. It'll land on the goal line. Time will beat the Bombers, you would think. Cummings now. Kicks wide. Doolan, can he make amends for that indiscretion? He kicks in the Berbikoff direction. He can't take the mark. Still there, Morrison. And it's down, knocked over. And the boundary throw-in, you would think, will be the last passage of play. It's been a terrific game of football. And the Eagles, 99. Lead Essendon, 93. Just seconds left. Alessio tries to get it down to Doolan. Kemp. Morrison for the Eagles. Gets a kick. And it has been marked by Cousins. So Cousins will throw the ball in the air. The siren will sound. And the West Coast have won a magnificent game of football here at Subiaco. Watch for the Jackets. The points go to the West Coast. And it has been a terrific game between two magnificent sides. And the Jackets are going. Have a look at this. This is big. 14-15 to 14-9, the West Coast win by six points, but the Jackets are a-flying at Subiaco.
So in what has been an epic encounter here at Subiaco, the Eagles run out eventual winners 14 15 95, 99, Essendon 14 9 93. Oh.